Okay, guys. So I'm here to give my NBA Finals pre prediction. And the two teams I have chosen to go to the Finals are the Golden State Warriors and the Chicago Bulls. I already mentioned why I think the Golden State Warriors are going to the finals. I'm going to pick a that tip in this video. Okay guys, so I'm here to talk about some basketball today. And today's topic is why the Golden State Warriors are going to reach the Western Conference Finals. Now there are two reasons why I say this. The first one being the top four teams in the West, in the Western Conference, in my opinion, all have major flaws. Let's start off with Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City just lost Russell Westbrook for the beginning 46 weeks of the season. And that to me shied the Oklahoma City Thunder down the next because they failed to acquire a good option to help Kevin Durant in case Russell Westbrook was out. Now let's move on to the Houston Rockets. And I made a video about this. I'll leave the link to that video somewhere in the description or on the video itself. I think the Houston Rockets have no bank to speak of and that'll hurt them down the stretch because their starters are going to have to play major minutes. And that's why I have the Houston Rockets outside of the top five. Now on to the LA Clippers. To me, the LA Clippers are basically in the same spot they were last year, which was they have no real second option until Blake Griffin develops his post-game. Blake Griffin right now is a nice young player, but he gets a highlight reel. He has no post game. The forwards and centers in the league don't respect him whatsoever, and I just feel like CP3 is going to have to carry the load again. Now, finally, to the San Antonio Spurs. My question with them is, is how will Kim Duncan and Manuel Ginobili rebound from the final loss? So, that is it for the Golden State Warriors. And while the Golden State Warriors go against my philosophy, a building a basketball team, I'm more of an anti-out guy. The Golden State Warriors are, are arguably the best winning team in the league. Last year, as a team, they shot 40 Forty point three percent from three as a team. They were led by Stephen Curry who shot 
45 one green baguette from green. Now, with the acquisition of Andre Gugara, I expect him to be more of an up-tempo team because Andre Gugara is an athletic forward who likes to run up and down the court. And on the defense end, he can shut down the defender that probably will create some deflections and some steals on the defense end so that Golden State can capitalize on it. Stephen Curry right here Average 22.9 points per game with six point nine six. I expect them to average about the same. I expect the three three point percentage to go down because teams are going to focus their defensive effort on the green point line. But now that they have acquired Andre Gugara, they have five good young players in Harrison Barnes, Kayden Thompson, David Lee, Jeff Curry and Andre Gugala. So I expect them to be more up tempo and not depend on the green as much. They'll still shoot it a lot, but I expect them to want to tire team out, run up and down the floor, and tire. Team like the Spurs and the Rockets out. Also, Stephen Curry sidekick Kane Thompson. I expect them to have more of a game, which was 16 point six points per game with 3.7 rebounds. Like Stephen Curry, I expect his three point shooting percentage to go down because, like I said, the poking defense is gonna, foc- is gonna mainly focus on the three point line. But the real guard course on this team. Going into this season, in my opinion, is Harrison Barnes. Because Harrison Barnes is now coming off the bank. I believe since he's coming off the bank, he's going to get more opportunities to score the basketball. Last year, Harrison Barnes Scotty 81 games and average 9.2 points per game and 5.8 rebounds. Now that he's coming off the bank without Stephen Curry or and or King and Thompson on the floor, I can reason to be a Expect them to score about 12 to 14 points a game. This guy could score from the low post and from the three point line. He shot 35.9 per game from three. And I know I've criticized him in the past because of his motor, 
But coming off the bank, I think he could be a real ass asset towards the Golden State Warriors. Finally, I expect more of a shame from David Lee, who last year averaged 16 and a half and 11 point two points per game. Ultimately, I expect the Golden State Warriors to have about 50 to 55 wins. Now for the Eastern Conference, I have picked the Chicago Bulls. And I'm also going to pick the tip of the first part of my Eastern Conference preview where I explain this in detail. But the main reason why I say the Chicago Bulls are going to go to the NBA Finals is because one, the Chicago Bulls got Derek Rose back and he's gonna give them more separation when it comes to close games and two, Michael Beasley is probably the second best player on the Heat this year. Again, I'm going to post a clip explaining way after this in detail. Okay guys, so I'm here to preview the Eastern Conference for the 2000 13, 2014 season. I'll probably split this up into 15 minute intervals and try to do it like that. The way how I'm gonna do this is basically start with the first season and with the eight season and then tell you who's gonna reach the Eastern Conference. Now, the first team for me is obviously the Miami Heat. And the reason why I say this is because the Miami Heat have a collection of one great player and now two very good players. I think while they might take a step back, they'll still have enough firepower to where they can obtain that first seed. Now, the way how I think the Miami Heat are going to run their offense is going to get out on the fast break. That can be because while the Miami Heat did acquire Greg Owen, Greg Owen hasn't been able to stay healthy. Subsequently, the Miami Heat don't have that big man who can defend the paint on the defensive end and can act on the enforcer on the offensive end. So I think for the majority of the season, you will see the Mi Miami Heat trying to run it up and down, trying to get in the open court, and trying to try to keep teams out. I think if teams get them in the half court area, the Miami Heat are in trouble. Now, obviously, the Miami Heat are going to go to LeBron James, who last year averaged 26.8 points per game 
eight rebounds, and seven points to assist. He's gonna do what he does. He's gonna be the locomotive. He's gonna shoot the gum shot. He's gonna try to draw contact. But my only question for the Miami is who's gonna be the second best player on the team? Because I don't think Greenway could do that. That can be because Greenway's game is predicated on drawing contact to score points. And his knees are so bad at this stage that he won't be able to withstand the contact. So, the question is, Who's going to help LeBron James get to the Eastern Conference Finals or maybe even the Finals? Now, Greenway last year averaged 21.2 points per game with five rebounds and 5.1 assists. Like I said, I don't think he's capable of being the second best player because of his knees. Now, I don't think Chris Bosh can be the second best player either because Chris Bosh, because of his body type, is a facial player. He can't play in the low post. His body is too small to take a punishment to constantly play in the low post. So, Chris Bosch plays like a perimeter big man. And while that's good, that's not enough can help LeBron and the Miami Heat get to the championship. Now, Chris Bosh last year averaged 16.6 points point and 6.8 point rebounds. I think who's going to end up being the second best player on the Miami Heat. And this is going to be a shocker to you guys. I personally think that at the end of the season, Michael Beasley, who had trouble with the law because of his weed issues, who hasn't been able to to stay on roster for more than two, two or three years, I can see my be the second best player on the Heat. That's simply because Michael Beasley can attack the basket and shoot the basketball from the perimeter. And when this guy is on his game, he could score 18 to 22 points a night. He could fail score the, bas the basketball. Now, Michael Beasley out here with the Suns averaged 10.1 points per game with 3.8 rebounds. Now, I think he could have reason to be if he got 17 to 19 points and help it, he get the first seed in the Eastern Conference. Now, 
going on to the second series. My second series, the Chicago Bulls. I'll insert the tip of the Chicago Bulls right here. Okay guys, so I'm here to talk more NBA again, and more specifically, why the Chicago Bulls are going to be a top two seed in the Eastern Conference this year. Now the Chicago Bulls last year went 45 and 37, and we're fifth in the Eastern Conference, but got eliminated in the Eastern Conference semifinals by the Heat. Now, the main reason why I say the Chicago Bulls are a top two seed in the East is because of the return of Gary Rose. I think the return of Gary Rose, while it doesn't solve all the problems that the Bulls have coming into this year. It solves the majority of them. First of all, Derek Rose will give Dom, Dom Kibbeau the ability to rest the rest of his guys down the stretch. Last year, because the Bulls didn't have Derek Rose, in order to win games, the, the starters had to play a lot of minutes, especially Go King Noah and Luol Gang. Luol Gang last year averaged 38.7 minutes per game, while Go King Noah averaged 36.8 minutes per game. I can give they reduce the minutes by an average of five to seven per game. They'll be fresher down the stretch and have more energy when it comes to payoff time. Secondly, I can get a growth will provide the ball with some breathing room in games. And what I mean by breathing room is the fact that the Bulls last year as a team scored 93.2 main points per game while allowing 92.9 points per game. I can go with the fact that Gary Gross for his career is averaging 20.5 points per game with 6.7 assists. I can go give the Bulls some extra breathing room and I also give them the capability to rest the player even more. Now getting to the negative that the Bulls have. The Bulls get off season failed to find somebody who can come off the bank and give them some sort of scoring. After all, during this offseason, they lost their two best bank players from last year in Marco Bellinelli and Nate Robinson. Nate Robinson last year averaged 13.1 points per game with 4.46 
and Margo Bellinelli have reached 9.6 minutes, 9.6 points per game with two assists. They lost both of those players, and now I think either at the beginning of the year or at the trade deadline, the Bulls are going to have to find somebody that could come off the bench and score. Also, the Bulls, in my opinion, need to find a starting point guard. I think that coming off that ACL injury, Gary Grove would be better playing shooting guard and just being in attack mode where he doesn't have to worry about distributing that much. If he doesn't have to worry about distributing, that will let him play his game more comfortably. And I came up with a point guard who they can acquire at the deadline in Gravis Basquez. Now Gravis Basquez this year is going to be playing in Sacramento, but last year he averaged 13.1 points per game with 9 assists. I believe he can command the Bulls off offense and give Gary Grove the chance to be just in attack mode, not have to worry about distributing. And now to my final point. I expect Ray the ball late in games to do something unorthodox. I expect them to play a small lineup. I expect them to play a combination of Kirk Heinrich, Gary Gross, Jimmy Butler, Luol Gang, and Joe King Noah. Because I can get the best defensive lineup that they have. Jimmy Butler is an athletic forward who can shut down the finger and last year averaged 8.6 points per game with 4 rebounds. I believe he could do the same thing Press improve on the defense to end. And of course, we know Kirk Heinrich is all reliable. Luol Gang is also reliable, and the rest of that lineup is reliable. I believe if they put that lineup out there, no offense will be able to go on and in game. Ultimately, I see the Chicago Bulls winning about 52 to 55 games. Like I said, I see Chippeo playing Gary Rose more at like shooting guard. At least that's what I would like to see, to only see him in attack mode, and I think the Bulls are going to give the Heat a run for the money. Well guys, that's it for right now.